Okay, so I haven't made a tutorial in a while, or a Ventus tutorial anyway, uh, so I was going to make one. So what I'm going to start with is we need a model. So we're going to make like a, take an object and just change like say the skins on the object. So let's look for, uh, I don't know, uh, a toy or something, I don't know, let's look for something. Toy gun, I don't know. Something we can use. Uh, I right, make sure it's downloadable. That's right. Something cool. Or gun. Thinking like a gun, like Call of Duty. So like you have a configurator where you can put skins on the weapon. Maybe. <clears throat> Thinking that might be good. An easy thing to make. Yeah, but you can do with any project. I'm just gonna browse. That looks kind of cool. Kind of like that. Could change the yellow. Change the yellow barrel. Um, or we can go for something more. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't, oh, that's cost money. Oh, all these, all these AKM. Don't know if the materials will come in as one part. That's the only thing. Or if it's one one texture map. That's the only thing. Um, but let's see. We'll just pick anything. It doesn't matter. Let's try it. We'll try. It. We'll, if the if if it's not, well, that looks kind of cool. Let's go for this one. Let's see if this works. So let's see. Looks kind of sci-fi. Yeah, let it load. Internet struggling. There we go. Do, 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 do. It might be one texture map. I'm hoping it's not, but it looks like the yellow might be just. There might be one texture map. We'll see. We can, so I'm gonna download the GLTF file. <coughs> just double that. Do that. And I'm gonna make a folder on my desktop. On my D drive. Sorry. I'm just gonna make it new folder. Uh, Mentus config or config, and this is where I'm going to unzip that model. Okay, so I'm going to put in a new folder again. I'll call this models. <coughs> okay, and let's go to there. Drag those files into there. So let's see if this works. So you can drag and drop the scene GLTF straight into the Ventus, into the hierarchy as you can see, and it will just import that in automatically, which is cool. Yeah, saves you that that extra piece of work. It looks like it might be in separate parts, but we'll see. Uh, let's see if we can find. I think this is just the yellow. Let's do the yellow. Let's focus on the yellow, the yellow bits. Yeah, so these two will be our main focus for the materials. <coughs> the rest we will leave as it is for now. So what I'll do, just delete this. This, this geometry importer node, because it's already imported now. Uh, I'm just going to position it a little. Um, I, you can clean this up if you want, so you can go in and, you know, get rid of these additional. I think you can delete those, it shouldn't, shouldn't matter too much. There you go. Um, reset that. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that that scale and that size. Let's rotate it. Yeah, I'm not happy with the the, the pivot point. So what I can do is just go into here, just adjust the rotation center. Something like this, and move it up. Let's see how that rotation works. Yeah, that looks much more better. So, uh, because it's it's not a geometry we're bringing in, we're just borrowing this. Right. So there we go. So now I, I'm happy with that rotation. There we go. Cool. So we're trying to make like a little configurator weapon configurator, like you'd see in Call of Duty or something, where you know you can change the skins. Oops, I may have moved. There we go. Cool. So these two, we want to create, we want to replace these two base textures with our own custom 
materials or texture or whatever so you can have buttons and you click and you can switch through and <coughs> try different skins so what I'm going to do is create oh let's click off that I'm going to make a switch so I'm going to just you can go press spacebar switch I want a value switch and say we're going to have six skins <coughs> and what I want to do is pipe these URLs to to where I'm gonna have my skins. So on my D drive, I'm gonna have D drive, and then I'm gonna make a new folder, and I'm just gonna call it skins. And in the skins folder, I need some wallpapers. So okay, we we'll open a new tab, and what we're gonna do is get tileable tileable wallpaper. Okay, uh, or textures. You know, I don't know textures. It doesn't matter. It can be anything. As long as it's tidable, it, it, it should work, hopefully. Uh, let's just start with maybe this one. I'll take this. I'm going to save this into my folder. Uh, D drive. It was in Mentus. Config. Yeah, skins. And I'm just going to number this one. This is number one. Uh, let's go for this one, maybe. Uh, still loading. Right. Is this tileable? No, it's, but it looks got watermark. Uh, let's go for wallpaper. <coughs> let's get one wallpaper at least. Um, sorry for the coughing. Uh, yeah, we got a Pikachu. Let's get a Pikachu. Yeah, why not? Save image. Two that'll be two. Um, let's write in abstract title background or something. Let's see. Go for this. Do you know ah, it doesn't matter about the watermark because I'm not using it for any uh, free. So I already I noticed something here. Yeah, this is PNG, but uh, that should still it will work anyway. It's not a problem. Um, so it's, it's actually good if it's all the same. Can I change it? Let's see if I can just change that to a JPEG. JPG. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, just makes my life easier later. Kind of like this one. Um, or well, let's just go for abstract. Let's go for something completely different. It doesn't need to be tidable. Let's go for something, some funky colors, you know. Yeah, let's go for that. Save image. Four. I'll get another two, maybe. Let's get another two. Some cool ones. I don't know. Uh, maybe this. Let's go for this. Maybe image. Yeah. So we have a variety of different five. And uh, one more. So this this kind of one. I don't know. Okay. So we got we got a few different ones and six. <clears throat> so I've got six different images. Now you can get them from wherever you want. I'll just number them one to six. The fix is going to be a fixed path, so you can see it's going to be my D drive skins. So I'm just going to copy this path because we're going to need that because we're going to pipe this into our values into our value switch. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and merge the container. So you'll see why I do this to keep it cleaner. Um, and then inside here now, I'm going to add a string. String. And in that string, I'm going to paste our, our um, direct URL to where our, fold, uh, our file path is. And then I'm going to do this one dot jpg. jpg. There we go. So we've got that. And that, that string one. So I'm going to copy this, paste two, three, four, five, six. Now, I'm just going to quickly edit this now so that won't be two. 
Pre I'm gonna just try to keep it a short tutorial. There's nothing complicated. Three, four, five, and six. There we go. So now we've got six. Now we want to pipe these into our switch. So one to one, two to two, three, four, five. And six and these are fixed so it's not uh, from this is something for a really simple you know we're just keeping it really simple you could have six objects there's so many ways you could do it you could have this object with the six textures on and you can turn the object on and off or you can just switch the texture which is probably easier than having duplicating the object so I mean there's so many ways of doing it so what I want to expose from this switch, I, don't know, I do want to number these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the switch I want to expose the case, the set, and the output. So those are the things I want to uh, expose right now. Um, okay, so if we can back out of this and we can name this switch. Oh, make sure I spell it right. Switch. Cool. So right now the outputs are zero, there's nothing there. If I turn it to one, then you can see oh, one. Now you got JPEG one with the URL two, three, four, five, six. Really straightforward. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a button, buttons that will send an event, an arg event argument to set which which skin to load. So so that's why we've exposed the set and the case. Um so the case is just for us to like manually test it, so we can we can see it. But the the case is we can so we can we can you know we can do this. Or but the main thing we really want to expose is the set. So from here on this existing material, they've got this base material here, and the loader I want to link to our output, and I want to do the same for this base as well. Now you could do the specular as well, but. I mean, I think they're using the same, they looks looks like they're using the same texture for the specular in the base, but I mean, we can see what happens. But if I change this, now you can see we've got different skins for the weapon, which is quite cool. Now you might have to play around with the tiling or, or the UV mapping because this is just an imported model, it's not designed for this. So what you could do is go try playing the model space on, on that base texture and then you could actually probably change the scaling on that scale factor you know and get something you like the look of so um, that would work for your textures you know um, you can even rotate it you know there we go and I'll do the same for the uh, other other material so I'll just do the UVs so under mapping UV and I'll just assign triplane uh, model space and again, I'll just do the scale, scale all, till I'm happy with that, that look for that material or that texture. Now, if I go through the different textures, it's going to look different for each one. And you know, if you made your textures all the same size and the same thing, but it seems to actually work pretty well. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, so we've got all these fancy, we've got these fancy now skins, just like you would have in a game like Call of Duty or, or wherever, or a configurator. You could, this could be a simple car configurator with five different paint colors. Um, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, but yeah, just to give you an idea. <coughs> cool. So I mean, and we can spin this around, you know. So what we could do is add it, maybe if we want add the directional light in the scene, uh, you know, turn shadows on, you know. Maybe like this, kind of like the look of that. But yeah, but really, I just want to do the, just focus on just this switch and making buttons to control it. So. Now we've got our switch in place, now we need to just make buttons to, to control that switch. So, I'm going to make a group, just under here. I'll just call this menu, 
and I'm going to make a button. So this will be the first button. So this is the axis and a rounded rectangle. Oh, I'll need a color which will display the texture. <coughs> now you can design these buttons however you like. I'm just going to use a rounded rectangle for now. And on the tessellation, bring the roundness down and turn off like the bottom lift and say the top right is it top right top right yeah so we got something like this and i'll duplicate this duplicate this again so i'm holding control and just place it so one will be my frame and one will be my texture so what i could do is on this uh low one i just gonna text and this is the frame so you know that's the frame you can color this whatever color you want. I'll just do blue for now so you can see it more better. Um, and then we're going to add an axis on this one. Make it slightly smaller. So you can see the frame. And bring it out forward. Forward in this space. Not just a little bit. Because if you tilt it, you don't want the, it to to clip. So so if they're, so they don't share the same Z space. So you can see here. Get that weird clipping. So you might want to just eh, bring it forward, tiny bit. And now that shadow map, that's the shadow mapping, so we can fix that. I think that's the slope here. There we go. That's not a problem, we fixed that. So that, that was just the directional light effect in that. But you can see we've got a button. We have a button. Now what we can do is go into our base color, add the texture, base. And then I'm just going to... Browse, I could actually browse straight to the existing. Um, I could import it into the project or I can browse to that string. So, I could what I could do is actually borrow this, or this string we've got here, and uh, so I just copied that string because it has the URL to this folder path to, to JPEG one. And what I'm going to do is merge this button down. So I merge this axis, axis down. Actually, I'm going to leave the axis down and the group. Sorry, I'm jumping a bit. I'm just going to call this BTN1. So I'll leave the axis out of the group so we can move it around. So button one. Merge this into a container. Go into this container. Now in here, I'm going to paste the string that we copied. So one. I'm going to expose this value. So this, this value out. So this is the string, so this is the path for this texture, and I'll just link it. So now one is there. Well, also I'm going to do is expose this color, so if we want to change the frame color, we can do that. Okay, so next thing I want to do is add a touch button to the whole group. Just in front of it, um, you don't need this group anymore because it's already inside the group. So I'll delete that, and we've got this touch button. Now when I touch it, because well, I'm using the mouse, I'm just going to use single tap. And I want it to fire an event. So I'm going to create an event. I'm going to get an event. And I want to link the invert to single tap. Now I want to expose the argument. And the fired. I want to expose this out. So this is the fired event that will set. What's been pressed. So this you will notice when I press it. It's set. It's firing one. It's really, it's really quick. It's really hard. It might be hard to see, but if you watch here, you'll see the value one. Now the value one is the argument. So if I change this to two, you'll see the fired event would say two. So this, so this is what's going to be switching our URLs. Uh, so now what we actually, what we could do? Mm, no, I'm gonna make it more complicated. Yeah, I don't want to make it too complicated. I was going to do something a bit more complicated, but look. I'll leave it as this. So now we have button 1. So I could say 1, name the argument 1, JPEG 1, and that's it. Now, I could add a button animation, and you know, when it presses, I've made many videos on buttons, but I'm not going to do anything complicated. So I'm going to just leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. As it is. So we've got button one, and what I'm going to do is just copy down. So I'm going to hold control and drag down. Three, I've got four, five, and six. Uh, I'm going to rename these. Yeah, three, four, 
five, six. Now you could do is turn the interface on if you want. So if you if you update, say for example, one button, now you can copy it down, and without having to edit each one again or duplicating down again. Uh, I'm just going to go in, just change these to two, the argument to two, and repeat this three, four, so on, three. Three, four, four. A cool thing you could have we could have done is I'll do it with this. I'll do it with the last one, which I was, I was uh, five. Cool thing what we could have done is you know where I'm numbering five and five and I named that. If I, I wanted, I could have one value which would have populated this and this. So I could have, for example, let's go back to this one. I could have done convert this, convert to text. So convert to text. Now I could have had, say, let's take this string here. So we got, we know that this D drive. So this could have been zero, and then the values are only the string. So string. So the first string would be this this part of the URL. Yeah. So zero. And then we'll have one. So it'd be uh make sure you have your squiggly brackets and then one and then we would have another one, two. Because this would be the extension, so two. So, so two, so if I go here, so I make another string, make sure it's a, I'll call this URL, URL, extension, which would be like .jpg, .jpg, and that would be two, would come from there. So now you can see now one, would be the number so we need to say assign the number now what we could have done we can use uh is it a container uh where is it is it container info and we can take is the name index for that because we've numbered the buttons one two three four five six and the jpegs are named one to six and the arguments are going to be one to six so i mean you could have another string and then expose that value and then link the argument and the thing together or you can just use that container index so if i take that container index and say name index oh sorry is it sorry let's double check we want yeah we want the name name index so name index there we go and the name index here is one so whatever you number this container will now be that number for the that JPEG, so it'll be two or three or four or whatever it is. Um, so now we've got this exposed. So what I could do is say instead of this ex being exposed now, so I'm un unexposed there. I can delete this and link this to here. It's doing the same job, and then now the argument event argument can also be named the. Uh, Instead of exposing that, I could link the argument to my name index. So now, if I go back out, go clean up. So then we have we have just the frame, and the texture is just going to change now when we rename the button. So if I say two, oh, now something didn't work. Nah. Oh, it did work. Oh, they're all in the same place. So it did work. So it is working. Um, it's just they're all overlapping each other. So what I could do now, so I'll make sure that's one, is just drag these down. So update the other containers. There we go. And you notice that six changed. So now I can clean up all these other containers because we don't need these values. So it's a bit, it's a bit more complicated the way I've done it. I mean, rather than just having that string straight and then changing one, two, three, four. But 
then it makes your life easier. Say if you have to make multiple buttons, say you needed 20, then you could have just duplicated and used the container number to name the index and to, to reference that file um, just using that name index. So this is just, just one way of doing it. There's many ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to just bring in the range node. In the range node. Bam. I'm going to say X left chain. And yeah, we're just going to spread that out. Just place an axis here. There we go. And just move it here. Okay. So you can see now we've got a button for each one. <coughs> now I can go and just make a quick animation because I don't want the frame to be visible. So I'm just going to add an axis for that frame as well. And a keyframe animation. Uh, I'm just going to take the scale all. Uh, let's scale this up a bit so we can see our timeline better. So in seconds, I want to be in seconds so it's easier for me to see. Uh, one second animation is fine. So here, this is where it's clicked. When it's not clicked, zero. There we go. So we've got something like this. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's just a quick, simple, simple animation, just to indicate that we've clicked it. So when we click it, we want it to say, "Okay, this is the click state," and it's not clicked. Reset itself. <clears throat> and what I want to do is actually put a linear node in there and set this to 0.5. So when I say, you'll see in a second. So if I set a two states, I'm gonna just set two states. Shift this. I just do soft states. So when I say next and begin next now I don't know why the next is taking so long oh I guess because the zero is too maybe zero is too big so let's say because it's going from zero to one which is taking quite a second is too long so let's say that let's say something like <coughs> point nine there we go so let's see how that how long that takes there we go, that's better. And um, probably don't want it to be a second because you want an instant instant response. So maybe half a second just for that frame to appear. So bam, begin. So what I want to do is link the next, take the existing animation. So this on the hook, you can name this button animation. Whatever you want to name it. And I'm gonna take the event. So the the next and link it to the single tap. You could link it either to the single tap here or you could choose to link it to this to the event. It doesn't matter because the button is still triggering that event which would then trigger the animation or the button could just go straight to the animation. Either way it's it's you you can do it many ways. Uh, but yeah, you can link straight to the button or to the event. Uh, so we can let's make this a little bit tidier. So let's tidy up our our, our window. So because we're going to have everything overlap, so I'm just going to move things around. Maybe I'll put this in a family like Control Shift F to put those into like a group there. There we go. And maybe I'll put this in a family. So Control Shift F. There we go. Just to keep it a little bit organized. It's nice to keep things organized <clears throat> <clears throat> so we have that which is cool um, and what we want to do from our animation so we've already linked the next so when we click it it's triggered that but when we want when we click another one we want to reset it. so I want to expose that begin I'm gonna double click the expose button here where it says begin I'm just gonna call it reset reset so now, no, that's the res that will reset. So when I go out here, I've got reset. So if I click it, it's selected. Reset, resets the button. And what I'm going to do is just drag and drop on each one. So now when each when I click on, for example, when I click on the fired, I know that event's fired, so I want to reset all of these buttons so what I want to do is each one to reset the other so I'm going to select all my buttons 
like this. I'm going to take button one. Make sure I have all of these selected. Strike the reset there. Do the same for two. Two. Drag the reset there. Three. Select those all. Drag the reset. Four. Select those all. Drag the reset to that. Five. Select them all. And link the reset to five. So they should all reset each other when you click on them. So now they're all connected. So if I say click on two, now it resets two, three, four, five, and so on. And you can see this. I'm not happy with the animation of the speed. So what I can do is go in here, maybe tweak this to like point two on my linear. It could be just that. That's the effect in it. Let's update these and just take a look. There we go. It's quicker. Now the arrange node is doing it from the left, so I might change my arrange node the chain uh, to center chain. Then just adjust the axis of that. There we go. So now it's doing it from both sides rather than. But yeah, you could choose not to even have this and position them manually if you don't if you don't want it to move. Um, but yeah, just to give you an idea. So now you can see we've got a simple button. Now, if I added, say, for example, say I have a, a, I want to add another skin. Let's just do it. Let's just get another skin. Wallpaper. Uh, abstract. Uh, images. I'll just get anything. What can we get? Anything that looks cool. Uh, they all look cool. But... <coughs> this just go for that. That one stands out. Okay, save image and say now I want seven. So seven. I've saved it into that folder. Have I saved it into that? Yeah, I've saved it into that folder. So now I have button seven. So now all I want to do, I'll just copy this, paste. Now I've got this on. I have to make sure I unlink these because the it copied it. But if I name this seven now. The container 7, all I have to do is just make sure I link everything to that button. But well, you can see 7 is already there, the texture is already preloaded, the argument will say will read 7 as well, send 7. So if I click it, you'll see the argument send in 7. Um, and all I have to do is just make sure I select all those, drag the resets to that, and should be good to go. So I might have to do. Oh, I'll have to do it this way as well. Let me just double check. So I have it going both ways. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. So now, they all reset each other. Uh, so easy to add a button in. It was quicker than having to go in, edit these, that's that path for, say, edit this, this URL edit the 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 argument you know and that's it so now I've got my menu so I can use actually just merge this down if I want I could merge the container down uh, do I want to do that actually before I do that what I do need to do is expose the invoke now the invoke is important because this is what the button's going to be called so it'd be one two three or whatever or, or so I just call this pressed because this is what's gonna we're linking to the the switch the set case, so we need those exposed on the event. <coughs> so I'm just gonna drag down like so. There we go. So each one of those have that pressed event exposed. And now what I can do is I can merge this to a container. So that's the menu, and then these are the buttons where I can. I'm just gonna expose. The pressed event. I believe that's no, 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 no. Ignore me. Sorry, ignore me. So I'm thinking I've got it the wrong way around. 
let me undo what I've done so I'll just unexpose those so you don't need this press the exposed we're gonna link the sets to the fired so we need to link the 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 fired because that's your sending event we so when it's pressed we're firing that event so we want to send that link the case to that so we're going to expose the fired so it just goes to select all those expose the fired on each one and that six and seven there we go so now we've got seven exposed here now if I go to our switch put the menu beside the switch and link that to the each one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and seven. So now if I press the buttons, you should see the, the skin change. There you go. Simple. However, this, this was useful. I mean, I might have done it a bit long winded, but you can see the skins are changing as I click on the buttons. Now this one I probably have to change the uh, number seven, the mapping on that. But let's double check what's wrong with seven. Because seven is not. Oh, oh yeah. Don't forget you need to add seven into the into here as well. So copy this. Make sure you paste it into the switch because seven doesn't exist seven make sure we have seven in there because this is still fixed oh, there you go seven <clears throat> um so we've got this that's one thing we've done so we've created this kind of configurator you can customize your gun now say you want to spin the the weapon around really simple you can go into the touch translation nodes so in, under interaction and you can say oh we want a touch orbit and you can just drop a touch orbit in there and it will automatically spin but now it's going crazy so you can set limits on that so if you want so if you don't want it to spin all the way so we might want it to spin like this or we might want to lock it off so you can only pan certain certain amount so I could say okay so the azimuth let's watch the value for the azimuth now is this the azimuth no so the azimuth is this uh, the rotation on the y I believe that's the y so I want it to rotate say minus 4.5 to let's say 42 so I go here azim azimuth minus 4.5 to 42 and now it won't go further than that which is cool so i've locked those parameters and you can you can you can change it to what you like or what you prefer so i mean i'm happy with something like that i mean if i want i could increase that value so if i go here increase that value you'll see more i can turn it um yeah and I can change the skin color of the weapon. There we go. Let's see if I can add some gloss to this uh, and make it a bit more glossy. Can I add another? I just want to see if I can just add a, another texture of of the whole whole thing. I might be pushing my luck. Face. Let's just load in any. Yeah, I don't think it'll work like this, but let's try. Uh, let's see, skin smooth. Change this to camera reflection or world. Let's try world reflection. There we go. And I'm just going to scale this down. Uh, the UV mapping is going to be a bit weird on this, but there you go. I just had a little bit gloss. So I just put another material texture, just another texture, just add that gloss. You know, you can you can go in and tweak these materials, but I'll just, just cheat in and just cut it shortcuts. 
Um, and what you can do is you can go in here and just tweak the the material of that color so by changing the color here for darkening it. Or even change the opacity here. Huh? Maybe you have to go into the blending. Let's see. Yeah, oh, you can change the blending here. But there you go. I've got this metallic, almost metallic feel. Can add a background in if you want. Um, or we can just Google one, you know. Uh, sci fi grid texture or something. I don't know. Um, can be subtle, something like this. Save image. I'll just save it in here. Uh, you can drag and drop it in, I believe. So you can drag, you can drag and drop textures into Ventus into the into the hierarchy. So you don't have to actually create that color and then say material. Whatever. It will just do it, which is quite cool. Um, put axes on that. I'm gonna put it up here. Rectangle. Scale this up. Push it the back. Scale it up a bit more. There we go. Now it's not the best texture, but make sure I put the lighting model to no light or something like this. Uh, you can see, we can play around with the render options maybe. Uh, see, put blending options in here. I don't, know. I don't know what's going to happen when I do a spreader. I'm just doing experimental now. It's nothing. Oh, wrong thing. Make sure you don't choose the wrong thing. But there you go. Uh, choose the. Reduce the count, reduce the factor. I don't know. Maybe it's not the best texture, but you get the idea. You, you can create something out of nothing. But. Maybe I'll get a different texture. Black and white one would have been better. Uh... Oh, this is a nice one. There we go. I'm going to borrow this. It's a lot harder to see, but it's there. There we go. Skin, not the best texture, but you get the ID. UV, just change the TV mapping, UV zero, and just scale low, get rid of the clamp to repeat or wrap, wrap, get rid of that. I probably didn't even need that to be honest. There we go. I can just do do that. Okay. Why am I overcomplicating it? Uh, bring that back. See that. There we go. Cool. So we have a background. We have a button. We have, you know, whatever. You can make a digital button, and then you can animate that menu out or something. So, you know, so that that could pop open. So when you say you could click on say that that part of the weapon. And then your menu could open up, or or you could have a skins. It could be a, just a label that would say skins, and then then this this opens up or expands. You know, you can do so many things. It's not 
don't have to overcomplicate stuff. But hopefully it was useful. It was a tutorial. I haven't done these in a while. <coughs> but I'm hoping that there's some use to somebody anywhere out there. And you're keeping safe. Uh, and this is where we'll end it. Um, again. Let's end it here. Do, 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 do. Let's go. Thank you again. I hope to make more in the future.